Thank you, Charlie. You're kidding. Oh my god, are you leaving this? You're on in 10. <sighs> little brown ball, little brown ball, little brown balls in my mouth. Good evening. Welcome to CNN. I'm your host, Andres Bagglesworth. Um, breaking news. Um, pedophile, convicted rapist, and um, father to many African American children and um, children of. Sorry. Bill Cosby has been released from prison. Um, you know, I'm going to go off script here. I just uh, need to take a second. Um, he's been found, his conviction has been overturned. Um, I, my, my thoughts right now are with the Cosby kids. They're, um, they don't deserve this. They've been through hell. They've gone to hell and back. There's pudding in hell. Jello pudding. And this black man in oddly tasteful argyle sweaters raping them over and over again. Sorry. It's not your fault. If you're watching me right now, Rudy, it's not your fault. Let's let's take a break. Sorry. Um, How was that? Bill didn't rape what? the Cosby kids. Um, Why is it on the paper? Yeah. I'm the talent! It's not my job to know! You're the writer! Sebastian, I drive a Range Rover, not a Land Rover. That's five times now. Get it together, okay? You tell them it's a Range Rover. Thank you. Thank you. It's not hard. I just, as your boss and friend, as your boss, I wouldn't want you to make that mistake when you're at your parents' country club around all the rich folk. They'll put you on the slow bus. I don't want that for you. I need you here. So I pay you the big bucks, $50,000 the last five years for you to tell the dealership my car's broken that it's a Land Rover. They're gonna get confused. It's a Range Rover. They're gonna get excited when they see it now because they know they're doing the premium product. Okay? It's okay, it's okay. It's okay. Just take care. Welcome to the Ben Ben Show. I'm back from the islands. We're still in relaxed mode as you can tell. V-necks, not douchey. They're just, they're classy. You get the clavicle, you get a nice little clavicle, and this thing, apparently. This thing is attractive for women. But no, I'm just trying to keep it like chill, nice. Trying a different, diff, trying something different, you know, not making it no, 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 um, no, again, like my previous episode, no prep, really. Maybe some talking points, but really no prep, you know? Sebastian may or may not exist, I may be talking to the wall, but like the point is, I feel like on the show, that I do all this prep work for the shows in the past, and I end up overwhelming myself with the actual work of the show. The editing, adding the video clips, and I think... It's like, I'm, f I'm pushing forward something. I'm, I'm doing more work on the show to the point where the process of it is almost like a chore. And I loved it, I loved the show. I just wanna see if I can try to come, just, just kinda like, uh, relax, you know, just chill out. Calm it down, tone it down a little bit. Why not, try something. Take off your tie, just kind of, you know, just chill, you know, just 
Uh, is that, is that, uh, do you get your tickets to the gun show? Yeah? Just, just kind of chill it out a little, douche it up ever so slightly, but also in kind of a relaxed, hey, this is a soft and nice fabric. Yeah, I mean, there's no need, there's no need to put all your pressure on yourself when you're performing your art, performing your want, doing, doing, feeding your, your soul. There's no need to feel like I, after I do the show, I then have to, Edit for eight hours straight till five o'clock in the morning. Calm down. How many people watched your last episode? Four? Try something different. Just try calming it down a little bit. Ah. I see these kids at the university across the street, Concordia. It's this uh, Christian university in, in Austin, Texas. And I can tell they don't smoke pot or do drugs because every time I make a joke about when they're banding together about to go out, I, I say, hey, you guys about to go slam some rails at the strip club across, you know, two blocks away, blah, 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 and see, see Tiffany and Crystal and Candy. And they're like, uh, we know drugs are, they go this whole, this whole, like, like this, this whole thing they go into, this monologue, drugs are really bad, sir. They're really evil. And, they're, and then they, they accuse me like, are you okay? We can save you. I'm like, Jesus, man, I was just making a joke. It's making a joke. What are they doing banding together like that though? Like, why are they all huddled? If they're not gonna go drink and do, what are they What are they about to do? I don't understand, like just blindfold each other, give each other hand jobs, and they're like, Christ is with us, Christ is with us. Oh, this is not gay in any way. Hey, Bobby, did you finish, did you finish? Oh, oh that's what it feels like? Oh, okay. I don't understand, like, what's the point? Like, what is, what is, they're doing everything they're about to do as someone would do on the weekend, but they're not about to go out to do anything. They're about to go play video games together. I think it's, they're just about to give each other hand jobs and pretend like it's not the gayest thing in the entire world. Because Christ is with them. Christ is with them. The, the only trouble is that if you deny yourself that, like, I don't know. I had this idea to tell Sebastian that like, I'd like to have a friend, a close personal friend and tell his family that, not, not you, someone else. Um, the one I care about, uh, that they're addicted to um, riding the lightning, a colloquialism I made up about a drug that doesn't exist, ND824, pharmacological name. But like, I'd want to try ND824 if I was at Concordia. I want to get that out of the way so I become a, con you know, constructive, a, a productive, a normal adult that has a balance between playing hard and working hard. But if you just work hard and like play hard, it's like, I'm gonna stay up late. That's like regressing back to when you're 12 years old. It's like my parents aren't home and I'm gonna stay up a little bit later. That it's not really a good adult do to let, let it out. I'm not talking, you know, having a pill problem or something like that. I just mean like, do a line, have a beer. Recognize that having the beer doesn't need to be a daily thing. That, that doing a line of Coke on occasion isn't the worst thing in the world. And it isn't. It's it's when you, you you take your rent money because you were denied Adderall by your psychiatrist because all they know is your postpartum depression and you're um, you're cutting yourself when you were younger. They don't know anything about your ability to focus or wanting to get things done and feeling kind of like lethargic. So you go down the street corner with your rent money and you buy some meth and then you end up buying too much. You can't pay rent that much, but you get so once you shoot up. You, Sky's the limit. You're you're riding the lightning, as it, as the as the kids say these days, and you know then oh you're living on the street, then you're living in a tent city, and then you try fentanyl, and then boom, not hard to get back from that motherfucker. I tell you what, and you love your tent city because you have the community, and people say hey we're gonna offer you free housing. And they're like eh, I really like my tent, I really do. Also, the hand jobs. We have these circle jerks that are amazing they all the all the uh, special personnel people that come down to make sure that we don't have AIDS they also bring down a lot of lube, Lubriderm and Jergens and they're sponsors of our tent city and sponsors of our jerk off circles and we love them they're also sponsors of the show and so are uh, monster monster energy drinks fantastic taurine great for your hair apparently taurine as a topical for your hair prevents baldness it does something with DHT but it doesn't involve the systemic nature of DHT blocking, which is a problem and cause brain fog and other things that you don't really want. Monster energy drink for baldness and for getting a little kick in the morning. But where was I? These Concordia kids, they don't know what they're talking about. They need to like let it out of their system. I have a friend. 
He got married when he was 22 years old, based around right college. He has pictures he posts every weekend of his family dressed up like they're in a Brooks Brothers catalog. And somehow, regardless of the seasons, there's foliage in these pictures. And they're all wearing fucking corduroys. It could be like July. And I'm like, what the fuck is this shit? There's a new picture of the corduroys. Slightly different tint of color. Slightly different khaki variation. Oh, look at that young man's sweater. Is that, is that, what is that? Auburn? What the fuck? It's fucking August, you fuck. Where's, where's your pink? I'm going to see a little paisley. That's never go to that in the tropics, that family. It's like they're in like, like some sort of perpetual Virginia Christmas special or for Thanksgiving thing in like upstate New York. It doesn't make any fucking sense to me. I don't understand how they do it. The kids, the kids all look happy. The wife has added weight every picture. She's, she's a whale now. I, that, that, you know that, you know an affair is coming. Her, not him. She's going to start dating a black guy. Because as you gain weight, the tunnel for the vagina becomes wider and it requires more girth. And he, my friend Tom, isn't packing. He just isn't packing. You know he's freaking out about it. He's getting really nervous about it because you see the wrinkles under his eyes and he's kind of fanning that smile like he's a happy family man. Like, it's awful. It's all, I, I'm like, how many strippers have I dated? How many porn stars? AVN Awards, that one time that transsexual, she was lovely. Best of both worlds, I say. Um, it's just, but they don't get paid enough. I'll talk about that later. Um, it's just, why did you do this? Because someone in some social book, Emily Post, I get married, boom, two years later, you, that's when you start having kids. Boom, by the time he's 28, it's like four kids. Boom, where's your life? Where's your golf weekend with the, with the, with the buddies? where you're doing lines of coke in Myrtle Beach off of Anastasia's perfectly formed tatas. No, that doesn't exist because you're part of the family. Every, every chance you get to have freedom involves playing with your little shit fucking kids. And then one day, when you're one of those Concordia fucking kids, Christian, uh, praise Jesus. John, do you need a hand job? You sure you don't need a hand job? You're sure. I, I, I got the Jurgens. Okay, okay, okay. One day, kids are starting talking shit. You get a little bit older, your wife's like, honey, just let, let it go. Billy, I can't talk that way about your father. But dad's like, like a faggot, mom. And you're just driving the car. And then, and then, and then you hit him. You just, you just knock, knock that fucker out. You give him a nice Logan Paul right to the chin. And it just kind of goes like. And the head goes this way, the jaw goes. And then she's like, Tom, how, shut the fuck up, you cunt. Have you ever thought about losing a little bit of weight? Jesus fucking Christ. You know what? I don't feel bad about having sex with Jamal, okay? Now you're beating our kids. I'm like, God, I wish I fucking did the rails. I could have been fucking Anastasia right now. You gotta, you don't want that to happen. Concordia University, this is a public message statement. Do some drugs, make some poor decisions. This is the time you do it. You didn't do it all through high school because your fucking Christian belt parents said no. You're in a place where you can do whatever you want. Taxes, Texas, low, all this naughtiness. Talking about like Daisy Dukes running around, tight jeans. Have some fun. Make some bad decisions. Get someone pregnant. Give them breakfast in bed. It goes away. It's fun. Make some choices that you wouldn't normally make. Don't make the same choice every day. It's like deciding to go to an amusement park instead of going to the gym that day. All you do is you do a double the next day. You get to enjoy a different activity. Yes, you care about your body. You just adjust. Oh, I bought some Coke. That means I have less discretionary income to buy avocados. That's okay. I cut back my avocados, more rent money. I enjoyed the cocaine. It was worth it. These are the sacrifices. Don't just stay straight arrow all the way. Don't play life safe. You'll never have any growth. What does Tony Robbins say? You gotta put yourself in uncomfortable positions to move forward. So buy, buy an eight ball, okay? Just become an adult. Learn about life. <sighs> all the things that I've experienced and all the choices I've made have largely been genetic predispositions towards craziness because of my parents. Borderline personality disorder by my mother and narcissistic personality disorder as uh, diagnosed by the child psychiatrists and psychiatrists that were in my parents' divorce and alimony hearings from 
five years old till I was like 18. Fucking nightmare. Oh my god. But eventually they diagnosed my father with narcissistic personality disorder, which I recognized in myself at times through entitlement. Probably because I was arriving to, you know, BMW when I was 16 and Palm Beach, New York, you know the deal. It's not a great thing. You shouldn't give money to your kids because entitlement ultimately, regardless of their abilities, it, 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 it regresses them. It, it keeps them from achieving their potential. So I won't make that same mistake. But I will find that I will occasionally make mistakes if I were to ever have kids and be stupid enough to go that route. My father would leave my brother and I in precarious situations and get distracted and go off and do other things. Like at Disney World and the Splash Mountain ride. We were staying in the Grand Floridian, the fabulous hotel, the best one there, the only place you should stay. Anyone who stays off campus, like not in Disney World, like stays at like a Hyatt, it's like, what's the point? It already takes an hour to get anywhere in Disney World itself. Why would you try to save money that way? Like the Wilderness Lodge, if you haven't stayed there, or the, or the one with the fucking giraffes, whatever the fuck that one's called, African Safari Hotel. Like, how, why would you deny your kids that? Also the comparables, like, I went to I went to Christmas I, I went to Christmas in Disney World with my family. So did I, John. Oh my gosh, did you have the giraffes at your place? Like, n no, we had a we got a we got turn down service at six. That was cool, and, and, and a continental breakfast. You didn't have did Mickey ever come for your breakfasts in the morning? The the great buffet. Um. Uh. uh no. No, they they mainly just burnt the toast. Cheerios were good. Anyway, um, uh, security um, picked up my brother and I three hours later. Um, it was before cell phones. And um, uh, uh, they, they, they brought us back to the hotel. My mom was yelling at my father. Apparently he got distracted and went off and had dinner by himself and uh, passed out drinking a bottle of wine. Not an alcoholic, but at that point in time, I guess he really just wanted to do his own Tom and forget that he was you know, married and had kids. Um, I remember also my parents fighting in all those like Grand Floridian diners. Uh, I would always pass out during dinner because they were just yelling back and forth at each other. That was funny. Um, like the passive aggressive shit they would say to each other, I remember. It's unbelievable that I'm not like the number one um, troll because the passive aggressive nature is the predisposition or the precursor to trolling online now. And I don't really care to do that, mainly because I find it so anathema for like some of my parents. Passive aggressive shit that they would say to each other. Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm not, I, I don't even, I know it was happening, the energy, more than I remember the words. I, I, my, my dad called the fire department and said there was an emergency when the pool fever broke at his compound on Palm Beach Island in Florida. They, they fixed it, but they came with a fire truck and were kind of perplexed as to why someone would think that's an appropriate choice of person to call. It makes me wonder, if I broke my arm by the pool, would he call a cement company to set it? Just practically speaking, that makes the most sense. Use wet cement, like the fastest. It's just, it's a little nutty. It's a little nutty. It, it's just, mm. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. If I was choking, would he just have me drink an entire bottle of lube? I don't know what my father thinks, but that's part of who I am and why I'm a crazy motherfucker now. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with who I am. I'm okay with my mom going to fancy dinners and saying that there's a there's a bug in each thing and so she'd have it for free despite being a multi-millionaire. Weird little crazy things like that. I'm okay with my mother dating Al Pacino, Robert Nero, Harrison Ford, and uh, Jimmy Connors. And bragging to kids at tennis camp that my mom dated Jimmy Connors as if that was an appropriate thing to say, only for them to have to say um, in, in, in black ink underneath my bunk, Jimmy Connors' son slept here, he likes tennis. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with my fact that my mom hung out with Grace Kelly and went to Studio 54 and stuff like that and probably smoked a lot of pole, particularly at her memorial service. I remember a lot of handsome older men going up to say, I knew your mother. I'm like, don't come to me, sir, and talk to me and imply that you fucked my mom at some point when she was younger. I don't need to hear this. She just fucking died. Okay, thanks. Thank you for that. It's amazing how you take the celebrity perception of 
meeting someone that you know is famous and saying, I just want you to know that I know you and I like what you do and this should be as important to you, this interaction as it is for me. And say that to a kid who just lost his mother. Hey, I just want you to know, I thought your mom was great, best blowjobs ever, sorry for your loss. What the fuck? Assholes. Ugh. Ugh. But at least I'm not Tom. Ugh. Sometimes I, uh, I like to go for walks around my neighborhood at three o'clock in the morning. And uh, I think about like the, the neighborhood security that I see go around and I wonder what do they do? Like what, ha what do they ever see? Do they act on, do they have a gun? Do they have like a crowbar? Are they like bobbies with little bats? Do they like, you see the bobby videos when they're talking about like uh, how ridiculous it is to be a police officer in London? Because it's like, if someone has a knife or like, like basically you're just like, hey, hey, stop, 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 hey. And then, and then the bad guy's just like, hoo, hoo, hoo. And they're like juking, like, ah, ah, ah. It's like a joke. There's no like tackling. It's no, it's just like, please stop, sir. Just sit down, please. It's so passive. It's like, ah, oh, it's unbelievable. But like, neighborhood security. What, what, are you, what are you looking for? When do you stop me? I was dressed all in black at three o'clock in the morning. I work weird hours. I mean, like the podcast, editing it at four or five o'clock in the morning. I need to decompress, go for a walk. And I'm wearing a dress all in black, and I see a, a weird woodland creature, a furry little fucker, go under some cars. I look under them. I'm starting to look under cars just because I'm like bored. I'm like, this is interesting. That was huge. Was it, was it a possum? Was it a raccoon? And the car, the, the security guard goes by, and I'm like, if you're not going to stop me now looking under cars at three o'clock in the morning, in a gated community, so to speak, what the fuck are you gonna stop? Like what like like what ski masks can people put out TVs at three o'clock in the morning? When do you stop and say, sir, is everything okay? Uh yes, it's fine. Um a possum stole my keys, I'm trying to get them back. Okay, you have a good night. Thank you so much. Um what do you do? Did you, you, you detain me? That's where you, that, you need to hire people for your neighborhood. If you're in the neighborhood watching, you don't have people with guns, that you're retarded. But you want someone with a gun that wants to use it, because they will create a situation where they can use it. In other words, they will ask. They'll ask to see my ID, proof of residence. They'll like, you know, escort me back to my place to show a lease. And you want that. You want that awkward, inappropriate, uh, like intrusion of privacy to happen once. Because once they do that, they're profusely apologized. They know who you are and you can make jokes with them and shit like that. And like, hey, can you get Bob next door? Because he doesn't cut his grass all the time. Like when he's supposed to, it looks like shit next to mine. Tomorrow night when he gets off work late, like, can you pull a gun on him and say, hey, sir, I need to see your lease. Or your 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 proof of your deed, whatever the fuck, that would be fun. You just like you get a good report of these guys. But the point is like, what is the point of these guys if they're not gonna stop me? It doesn't make me feel safe. It makes me feel like it's a waste of money because someone's paying for it. I'm guessing there's some like HOA fee or some shit that I pay for that I'm on. I don't know. There's, you know, like you get older, so you're paying for bills. That's why subscriptions are such a good business because you don't realize what you're paying for. Like, I could be paying for, like, Netscape or some shit from, like, 1994 or whatever the fuck. If it, subscriptions as a service existed back then. Um, subscriptions as a service, yeah. S-A-A-S. Uh, but you know what I mean? Like, like if AOL was five ninety five a month, like, I could, still, I could still be paying for that on my credit card if I didn't, like, renew my credit cards. Like, it would just be there. That's what's crazy. That's another thing. I wonder if SAS is lobbying credit card companies not to do that to where the, the, the subscription can roll over when you change your credit card. Because so many companies, debit and credit cards, have this thing where every six months they send you a new one and ask that you convert for security purposes or fraud purposes, fraud prevention. And then all the subscriptions get nullified. So the, the, the surreptitious subscription, the one that like doesn't send you a bill, so to speak, it sends you a receipt, sort of, like it just charges you, it keeps your card on file. That's really interesting. It's also really interesting that the authorization of your card is like encrypted, but it's kept somewhere. So the business doesn't really know what it is, but someone does. That's really weird. And they know when to charge it through your database. It says charge card now. We don't know what the card number is. And they send that request, that authorization, like authorization.net, and then they charge the card. It seems like a very weird, the dependence on the technology to do that like in, in the protection of privacy and like digital you know currency and credit it seems very i don't know like that risk in that system but uh yeah i don't i don't really understand the whole security thing in neighborhoods unless they're actually like they want to like do something to like care you know like 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 governor abbott for texas in, a, in another way 
is trying to protect Texans from being dependent on unemployment by banning it now so that the fall doesn't come around like the a, a pandemic insurance. He wants unemployment. He's like, I'm not banning unemployment. I'm just it's time to move on. You know, let's let's get going. You know, you're we're, you know you have another month of no evictions and blah blah blah. I understand why he's doing that. The same token, I'm sure it sucks for a lot of people, but I can also see why he's doing it. He's like, I don't want you guys to become doped up on this proverbial dole. I want you guys to be active and like trying to find jobs and. <sighs> And he comes across as an asshole to a lot of people for doing that. It's just one month. It's like it's just ending it one month sooner, I think. I don't think pandemic insurance is going to last very much longer. I don't see how it could. If the eviction evictions moratorium is ending next month, pandemic pandemic uh, uh, extra payments, the $300 per month from the government is going to end sometime. Maybe it's a couple months early, but I don't think it's going to last into next year. But maybe I'm wrong. But in any event, I think he's actually doing a good service that way. What I think is funny... That the national news takes that guy, I don't, I don't, you know, he, he has things I don't like, like his dog bill, like a, a animal cruelty, he says the, the new law, he vetoed it because it's redundant, like uh, locking up your dog outside the legal, he says that there's already law like that, I'm like, well, what added austerity measures were there that cost a lot of money that you didn't like, I, I wish he gave more clarity, just to say the fact that it's redundant is kind of silly. I'm sure there was something hidden in there that he didn't like, like you're allowed to shoot Jews in the face or something like that. And they do that all the time with bills, like the P Pakistani gender studies program. And this is, talk about that in a second, actually. Um, it, it's weird. But the guy's in a wheelchair, and he's conservative and a Republican, and national news doesn't show him in a wheelchair. Like, FDR intentionally hid this, but Governor Abbott does not have the ability across state lines in terms of national news to say, hey, by the way, can you just show me not in a wheelchair? So it's likely they'd show him not in a wheelchair because he's a Republican so that people can yell at him. Because when you're a Republican, it's disabled with a black wife, it's hard to say you're a racist white privileged pig. This guy, I don't know if he has a white a black wife or not. That seems to be a new play in the Democratic campaign. Like, by the way, John, you're white, you went to Harvard, it's great. All right, you got a date like um I don't know. You got a date like Whoopi Goldberg. That's, we really think that's a good match. She's 65 years old. I'm 46. Are you an ageist? We think Whoopi and you would be a good, that's good for your career. Let's get on that. Do I have to like have sex? What do you, sir, that's your business. But if you want to, you want to make it in the Democratic Party, you better shit out, have her shit out some kids, some mixed kids. I think that'll, that'll really help move things along. You know, think about it. Thank you. Jesus. Are you part of the team or not? I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Sorry, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Um, I did want to mention something, though, about... Yeah. Yeah. About Abbott and that. And... Mm, yeah. Uh, transgender. 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 I think that it's fucked up that transgender prostitutes, which have been prevalent throughout the crisis because people have not had enough m money to have biologically biological women as prostitutes. And this is a reality. This is a fundamental reality. Transgender prostitutes that are called TS, some, like Ashley, usually as an acronym or something, um, they... Uh, they get paid to less than their biological women counterparts in the sex industry. And I think that's wrong. And I'm worried about them because everyone's about to start going back to work and the, um, the frequency of their hires will be affected because people start making more money again and then start hiring biological women. I think for the sex industry to really flourish and be equal, there should be a mandate through the Biden administration to make sure that transsexual prostitutes are paid equally. That the, there's no like there's a base like two fifty an hour is the bottom, and that's for all all escorts. Period. It's the same thing with OnlyFans. All these women that have started showing you know their boobs and and, and and lovely women during the pandemic, they're about to lose a lot of their customer base because people are going to go back to work. And the question is, is there enough? Is there enough frequency now, or, or the, is it too saturated? 
to where some women that aren't at the upper echelon are they going to be pushed aside because people are going to have less time to look at this stuff I, I, I want them to survive i want them to be happy you know i want them to be happy i want them to survive um i want them to feel good about themselves you know i i, I really do I, I i think that that's an important part that people don't discuss um in the sex industry and it's, and it's a taboo subject but it's true there's a lot of heterosexual men that have been going to see transsexual prostitutes during the pandemic because they're cheaper because they've been late their hours have been cut um so i think that that should there should be a bare minimum there there should be a threat like, like a minimum wage biden should have one for transsexual prostitution um in the sex industry i think that's healthy and that's good and i want to equal the playing field and if you're going to tell me that what i'm saying is ridiculous uh you're you're transphobic i think unequivocally uh, you're unequivocally transphobic um and you should be shot and um and your kids should be uh kicked out of their school and, and forced to live in a tent city and given fentanyl that's what i think should happen to them um i bought a couch uh it hasn't come yet but the owners use couch fifty dollars off next door nextdoor.com if you don't know it is a great place to buy used furniture and to make semi-anonymous snitching that's racially charged about things you see in your own neighborhood. Like, strange black man on street corner last night. Anyone else see him? Yes, yes, Ben Ben. That's your neighbor, Jeff. Oh, I didn't know someone moved in. Uh, they haven't moved in. They, he's been living there for 10 years. You're just an asshole. Sorry about that. Sorry, neighbors. Sorry. That's what they do. Everything on next door is like that. It's like, uh, I saw this, these two women kissing on the street corner. And I thought, oh my God, what is going? It's like, all right, Carol. All right. Thank, thank you. Uh, thank you, Margaret Court. That, that's lovely. That's lovely. Let's move on. Move on. The same token, you see really interesting things. Like last week, I talked about the person that uh, posted about jacking off in the woods. That's an interesting post. Uh, the person that was jacking off likely posted that he saw someone jacking off to throw off the scent from the neighborhood. Older white man in red baseball cap, and in fact, it was a younger man in a green baseball cap. That way, next time someone sees the man masturbating, they'll think, well, according to that post, he's old, so that person's probably just pulling weeds. That's, that's what I think was at play there. Um, it's amazing the amount of money people spend for a restoration hardware couch. I bought a restoration hardware couch, custom made, like custom version for like $5,000. But then I just bought a couch for $50. Why, why, how did I do that? Well, the people that bus were selling a couch and I just came across this unknowingly, they sold a baker's couch. It put a baker, a baker, the, the designer baker for sale. Nothing wrong with it. I went to see it. I asked if they could ship it, you know, they're sort of speak, drive it over. They will. It's Baker. It's probably worth $7,000 and they're completely unaware of it. Um, that's awesome. So hopefully you don't watch this podcast because I just got, it's called a come up. That is a come up. That is a, uh, that is a Concordia circle jerk come up right there in the face. Very, very good. Um, I'm very, very excited about that because I don't know. I feel sometimes that when I have my mistress over, or mistresses, or potential mistresses, I feel bad when I tell them, uh, well, I just have my bedroom. I kind of like, you know, I want to make it less obvious of what my intentions are. So, you know, it's a little too Epstein just to go straight to the bedroom. So it's nice now to have a couch and then make the transition. I think that's healthy. That's the correct thing to do. It's chivalrous. And um, I think net, net, I'll get more play that way. So very excited about that. Um, next time I go on a date, I thought, other than bringing them back to my place directly and ordering in so I can guarantee some form of consensual play, um, if I'm out of, um, benzodiazepines, I will, uh, I will undoubtedly offer the following fun dinner idea. What if we hold a family hostage? and make them cook us spaghetti in their house. Because there's nothing better 
than people cooking under pressure to have a nice sensible meal and it will be free. And everything that we want to talk about, they will be forced to talk about because we're going to be holding them at gunpoint. And you have to really do this with someone after the fourth or fifth date to broach this, broach this idea because otherwise they'll be possibly freaked out. But once they feel comfortable enough with you that you're not psycho, to go psycho, to go completely the other way, they will kind of be like, that's, he's more interesting and quirky than, quirky than I thought. I, I, I like this. That's such a bad idea. It's not such a bad idea. You think it is, but it's not such a bad idea. Um, so, I don't know. Oh, this hair, man. Um, you know what's weird? Am I like sweating? What is it? I, I just, I shout, I just shout. I'm not, uh, is that just like how I am? Do I have hyperhydrosis? That's just nasty. Well, this cozy shirt, no, I can only wear it inside. I guess it's cute, I don't know. You can't even see it. Oh, this is nasty though. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I don't know. I have no idea what I'm gonna talk about. Someone's offered me to go to a gay, gay bar next weekend with her friends that are like, this is what's weird. This is actually really weird. Um, she wants me to go to a gay bar. Go gay hopping. Hop it. Hop it, hop in it. She's having a strip, this is, this, I don't understand what, the, the, listen to what I'm saying. Wait till I, 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 I enunciate better. Someone that I hooked up, you know, date, first date the other night, fabulous steakhouse, um, you know, overlooking the water, got, got a bottle of wine, ended up hooking up a little bit, um, you know, walking the dog, nice thing. My car then broke down right after that, which made me think, voodoo. Um, but uh, she broached the subject of next weekend, this coming weekend, that, um, yeah, that uh, perhaps, maybe, um, her friend is coming, two friends. One is bi, the other is gay, both men. And they're gonna to go to gay clubs down downtown. And I don't know if she broached the subject to me coming with them because of my hair, and she'd like to see how often I get myself into trouble just from this hair, which is clearly done on purpose. Um, and she actually meant, she's like, you think about like dyed it back? You think, you think like, you know, you could, have you thought about it? I'm like, she just obviously doesn't like it, I'm sure, but um, Whatever, I'm handsome enough to make it rock, I guess, a little bit, but it does look a little factual, right? It's, but it's coming, it's coming in. You can start to see the dark. I think it's nice, the darks that's coming in, the mix. I don't wanna put bleach in my hair. It's just, it's enough snuff. It's, it is where it is and it'll go away. Um, but I could be in difficult trouble next week when it comes to uh, avoiding the pitfalls and, and the benefits of being gay, which is that getting play when you're gay is way easier. It's way more physical, broaching of your of your your zone like grab a last like pet someone like oh he looks it's there's it's much more appropriate to say oh you love your arms you know that that's that's more that's one bit like if you could do that as a heterosexual man to women like your tits are just these are great that would be awesome because you you really sincerely mean it but the way we've been kind of even before progressive ideology, it's just not it's something that's done. It's like this supposed to be a secret, and you know, you, you work up to it, whatever. But uh, yeah, so I wonder how that dynamic. Is. Like she has a one guy friend that's bi, one that's gay, and that they're both coming down. So I'm gonna be with two gay guys. I'm guessing since we're going to gay clubs, and then it's her. She's also bi. Um. Which is interesting because I do think about that like she's bi and her last relationship was with a woman and it really hurt her. And I'm like, is this one of those things if I date this person that she's going to end up like cheating on me with someone named like Tiffany? And it's like, there's like, there's like, I don't know, you know, scissor play involved and maybe a giant black dildo and I have to, I have to like pretend like that didn't happen and then I'm still worth 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 something and everything's gonna be okay. Cause I don't I don't know that I could handle 
a lesbian or bisexual woman just leaving me for another woman. I, I, I could see a woman leaving me for a billionaire or something, but, but I, I don't know that I could handle it if it's a woman with the dildo. I don't, I don't know if it's the dildo or if I'm just being sexist, maybe, or it's like, how do you, is it, are my pecs too hard? You like something soft? I can, I can, I could, I don't know. Stop going, I can soften myself up. So are my features too severe? I think I have, I don't know. I don't, I just don't know that I can handle it. I, I don't know that I'd be ever whole again. Like when you, I, I when you date, like I, I've never been, I've never really had any bad things happen to me in relationships, like hurt by someone leaving. It's never happened. Uh, I don't know. It's very hard for me to distinguish the idea that I'm, I'm with someone who's like, or hanging out with someone that's like, likes to go box. And like, she, she, instead of like hooking up all night long, she's like, well, I have to get up early to go to my, my boxing session. I'm like, what am I getting myself into here? It's like, it's like this, like, you know, if, like, if Megan Fox was into, like, you know, very type A and boxing and, like, was bisexual and she, she's still, you know, bisexual, you know, I don't know, if I'm Machine Gun Kelly, you know, hair aside, I, 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 there's this weird feeling, it's like, I'm more intimidated by a woman taking you from me than I am a man. Not that I would, not that that's even a thing, but I think about it, I'm like, that is weird, huh? Like, also someone who's like, I'd rather go box in the morning than have sex all night. I've never been with someone like that. That's really weird. Like, if I was a gay man and I was with a gay guy, obviously, or or I or, or I, I somehow scored a straight man. No, this it wouldn't work for this this gay man who's, who's gay, hundred percent, and we're both gay and we love being gay and it's great gayness. And I wake up in the morning and he's like, or we, it's, it's 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night. And we're like, you know, just stroking each other and just like, this is fun. Um, and he's like, you know, I have to get, a, get up early to go to Tai Bo. I'm like, that, are, are you, are you, Tom, are you rejecting me? I thought we're having a good time stroke. Yeah, I know. But like next weekend, I just, I have a lot of kids to get to work and like. You know, I want to catch up on some sleep, and I really do have my like Taibo class, or I'm getting better at kicking. But I mean, okay, I, I guess it's just it. Like, what are your? I don't want to compete. The time, everyone's busy. I don't need someone that wants to be a professional UFC fighter. I want someone. Like, I, I I don't want a careerist person. I don't like the whole idea of dating a doctor. I don't care. I never have. And I, I don't want, I, I've never wanted someone who like, ah, oh, I have all these, you know, I can't, so I can't hang out with you. I have to go on a hike. Do you have to go on a hike? Why don't you just not eat like all my other girlfriends? That's a lot easier. But when you start to see, you like someone and you're kind of like, this is weird. It's like, is it just because you're just like, kind of like post COVID meeting people and you're kind of like, I don't know, your, your, your whole game's off, you know, you're just like, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing right now. I don't know, like, but maybe this is just something different, you know, like it's, not, I wouldn't normally do this. I wouldn't normally try to convert lesbians, but now that I back from COVID, I need to get my bearings straight. So now I'm going to try to take on this project of converting this lesbian to just my penis and no black dildos. And I'm having some, some kind of regrets about taking on the project. So I'm like, this is a daunting project. This takes a lot of work. A lot, of, a lot of prep and there's a lot of co co uh, conditions where this could blow up in your face like a giant black penis and you're gonna have to deal with that your ego will have to deal with that and that's tough because my ego is you know six inches and it's just so you know you know haven't said hi yet. So, you know, the note, the hi, like, when do you say hi? Um, I haven't said hi or, like, I had a great time. You know, I haven't done that yet either. Um, I don't know why. Mainly it's the car. I might, like, take it. You know, it's like, 
if she wanted to, want to hang out or something like that, and then my car is broken. So it's like, okay, I just want to Uber to her place to like hang out one night after work or something. That's weird too, because it's like very forced. It's like, you're gonna take a $40 Uber ride. Like, cause it, not, the, not the money, the Uber length of time is an egregious driving distance for Uber. It's not casual, like, yeah, I'll drive over it. As silly as that sounds, there's a difference. And she could make note of that. And, it, and no woman wants to be needed. They want to be wanted. It's a very important distinction. Um, very important distinction. Uh, I have a friend of mine who used to like wear down women and say, if I call them every day and I let them know that I exist, eventually um, they won't forget me. And then I have a chance of dating them. It's the most bizarre thing I've ever heard. I've never heard of that strategy. It's like the work strategy. Like I really want this person to hire me. Let them know that I really want to work here. Oh my gosh, that's just stalker crazy nonsense. It has not worked out for him, and despite me giving him advice in every shape and form. And he has, I've always been good with, you know, giving people advice, and he's always asked me. I don't understand why do you ask me for advice but never take it. It's very strange. Why would you ask me about women and you see my record? You know, uh, this girl that had a photo shoot for for. Um, BC BG Maximera, this girl, the La Perla model. You've seen my, my curriculum vitae, my, my, my accomplishments, and yet you still like to say, but my way is the best way. And I've always told him, be, be yourself. So maybe that's, that's my fault. Probably shouldn't. Depending on what your goals are. You can't like live your whole life with a woman as a facade. Like, I don't know. Sometimes I wake up in the morning, this hair especially, like Joe Black. Oh, I, was, I, was, I, was, I can't do really do Pitts Black here. Kind of look like when he's dating um, Gwyneth Paltrow, they're both blonde all the time. It's funny, I think the movie came out at the same time, but like, his lips, you know, he's just like. I don't, I can't do Brad Pitt. Got the jaw for it. I just I, it's, we're different faces. Kind of, kind of, I'm kind of a more homely. Robert Redford, I think. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Anyways. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. I, you know, I hope I hope it works out. I, I think it's be nice to like have a friend, someone just have have. It's been, everything's been like really hectic, and it's nice to have like a healthy like someone to do something with. But at the same time, they also feel like someone who like has all this other stuff going on. And I've always been trying to be helpful with other women in the past. Like, my, our, your happiness can't be me. Like, it has to be other things, you know? Like, this is like, I can't depend upon you for my happiness because I have to, like, push myself, my career, and stuff like that. You know what I mean? But I've had these, you know, live with women for years and on end and stuff like that. And it, it's kind of, um, you know, it's just one of those things that sometimes, like, you notice with your friends, they, they stop becoming close, close because the relationship dominates but this girl it's it's like I don't think that's ever going to be the case but at the same time she did have a relation with this man that, that was like about the, the the most like not be like five foot ten pudgy like I just not me and so she was really upset by that breakup and he was not a multi-millionaire or um like there's nothing to balance that, like if he was like a video I'm not going to say anything. It's just like, it was, it, she's a down-to-earth person, despite she, she's very attractive. And, um, I've also managed to nail that, that amazing combination a few times. Oh, basically every time, except for once. Uh, the down-to-earth thing for women that are absolutely beautiful is wonderful. And if you're attracting women like that, odds are that you're, like, on the right track, I think, as a man. Um, definitely on the right track, unequivocally. Because... To not, it is beauty and stuff like that, you know, it's very superficial things and, and, so, and so on and so forth. And that, that is just what it is. But, uh, you know, what you like is what you like. But, like, to find people that aren't, like, horrible people, like, 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 just, like, social climbing, fake, you know, but, like, also aware of their sexuality or just aware that every man in the room would love to, you know, fuck them. That, that's that's nice. There's a nice balance there. And they're like, they kind of like like that. They can use it to their advantage, but they don't find it abhorrent. They're not like overly feminist about the whole thing. <sighs> because ultimately, when it comes to sex, women don't really want men to be feminists. 
they don't want to be raped, <laughs> but they don't want you to say, is it okay if I do this? Is it, okay? I'm going to touch your butt right now. As, will you let me know if the pressure is okay? Like you're getting a massage or some crazy shit. They don't want that. They want you to take control. They want you to take what you want. And that's that. Sebastian, where are we right now in time? 50 minutes. That's about good. I don't know. I'm feeling pretty good about this little random talk. Um, ben Ben Mini. I don't know what I'll call this. It's 47 minutes. It's okay. Um, no no clips. No side things. Just random talking. Good, good, good shit. Um, um, yeah. All right. Talk to you later. Uh, subscribe down below. Say hi. And I'll try. I'll go back to my normal format probably uh, at some point. I just... Trying different things. All right, you stay fabulous. All right, ciao, ciao.